Hello YouTubers and welcome to another Generation Behind Hi-Fi video. Today I'll be reviewing my RHT HT1205 subwoofer to see how it compares to my SVS SB3000. This RHT subwoofer is a recent purchase of mine and is also a perfect example of a Generation Behind Hi-Fi deal. RHT recently announced that they are releasing a new line of HT series of subwoofers and that means the old generation is now on sale for up to 40% off. I've been wanting to add a second subwoofer to my main theater room for quite a while now and I think this HT1205 will be a perfect fit. I plan on placing this subwoofer on the back wall near my theater chairs to give the room and audience a little bit more bass kick. But before I put this subwoofer in its final resting place, let's see how it sounds on its own in a 3.1 setup. Today I'll be reviewing and comparing my new RHT HT1205 to my SVS SB3000 and I think you might be surprised by the results. RHT is a speaker manufacturer who specializes in only one thing, and that's subwoofers. They have been building world class subwoofers for several decades now and it shows by the amount of awards and recommendations that they receive from magazines and reviewers. My RHT HT1205 is my first subwoofer from the brand and so far I'm very impressed. If you're curious how a RHT HT1205 is constructed, make sure you check out my look inside video. This is where I take apart the HT1205 to get an idea of its construction and the materials they used and I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. The HT acronym in RHT's HT series of subwoofers stands for home theater and in the model name the 12 refers to the 12 inch driver and the 5 refers to 500 watts of amplifier power. What is surprising to me is RHT's choice in cabinets for their home theater line of subwoofers. The reason I say this is most moviegoers prefer loud and sometimes obnoxious bass that they can feel and one way of achieving maximum output and bass from your driver and amp combo is to utilize a ported cabinet design. Simply put, a ported cabinet will yield greater output and bass versus a sealed cabinet design when all other variables are equal. I think what RHT was trying to achieve for their customers is to cater to someone who likes to listen to music and also watch movies equally on their system. The HT1205 has more than enough output to fill my living room with explosions from movies while also sounding natural and not overbearing during my music listening sessions. In my opinion, this is what makes the RHT subwoofer so great for audiophiles like myself. It really does a great job at both movies and music, and not many subwoofer manufacturers can pull that off. Before I get too far into how this monster sounds, let me first talk about this subwoofer specifications and build quality, because I think this subwoofer incorporates some pretty neat features that you normally don't see on a budget subwoofer. At the heart of the HT1205 is a 12 inch driver that features a rubber surround, vented pole piece, large ferrite magnet, and stitched tensile leads. The comb material is made out of glass fibers and the center dust cap is real carbon fiber. Yes, you heard that right. The dust cap is made out of real carbon fiber. This is the same stuff that is used in Formula One race cars and exotic sports cars like Ferraris and Aston Martins. The carbon fiber dust cap not only acts as a dust cap for the voice coil, but it also improves the rigidity of the comb. Rel claims that by using a dust cap made out of carbon fiber that the stiffness of the cone is improved by a factor of three. That's pretty impressive. Another neat feature is the beautiful top plate that has Rel printed on it. This top plate is finished with five coats of lacquer and is also functional. Not only does this top plate act as a piece of jewelry for the cabinet, but it's also there to dampen cabinet resonance. How cool is that? One of the things that has always bugged me about subwoofers is the labeling on the back of the amplifier can be very hard to read when you have the subwoofer right up against the wall. Usually in situations like this I'm forced to pull the subwoofer out so I can read the labeling or I have to try and bend my neck in ways it wasn't meant to be bent. Which isn't fun either. With RHT you'll no longer have to do that. RHT has double labeled the back of the amplifier so you can read it just as well from the front as you can from the back. RHT my neck says thank you. The RHT HT1205 is equipped with a 500 watt Class D amplifier that provides incredible dynamics and output for a budget oriented subwoofer with a sealed box design. The amplifier appears to be well made and includes capacitors with the branding Myron printed on them. I couldn't find any information on the internet about this brand of capacitors, but maybe someone watching this video has heard of them. If so, please let us know by leaving a comment down below. The features on this amplifier include a low pass crossover, phase control, dual purpose low level stereo RCA or LFE RCA inputs, 
low level RCA outputs, gain control, and a power switch. The two rotary knobs that adjust the low pass crossover in gain have a nice solid feel to them when making adjustments. This solid feel on the knobs makes small precise changes a breeze. Unfortunately, the HT series of subwoofers does not include the high level inputs that REL is known for. Now let's perform the knock test to see how much this cabinet sings. Very nice. The cabinet is nicely constructed. The front baffle is made out of 15 16 of an inch MDF, which is just under one inch in thickness. All the walls inside the cabinet are lined with polyfill, and the center brace is three quarters of an inch thick. The back of the cabinet wall, where the amplifier is mounted, is also three quarters of an inch thick. The line grain finish on the cabinet looks like one continuous sheet without any seams in it. Normally I can detect the seams of the finish at the edges where the two sides meet, but not with REL. You won't see any seams in the finish unless you flip over the sub and closely examine the bottom. I think REL did a nice job by making the seams very hard to detect. So what do you get when you buy a REL HT1205? Besides the subwoofer, REL includes some documentation for you to read. One of them is a document on the importance of safety, which includes a bunch of mumbo jumbo on what not to do, which I'm sure the lawyers forced them to include. Simply put, I won't be spending a lot of time talking about it. The second piece of documentation is a quick start guide that provides instructions on how to connect your new subwoofer to your electronics. You also get a nice grill for the subwoofer, which appears to be well made. If you have pets or children, then this grill is probably important to you. I think this grill will do a nice job of protecting the driver from any impending attacks from those cute little buggers. And lastly, REL includes two choices of mounting feet. The first set of feet are made out of billet aluminum and are very nicely constructed. I love the fact that they have REL printed on all of the feet. I think that was a nice design touch. The second set of feet are made out of rubber. I chose the rubber mounting feet since I have laminate floors throughout my house and I think they will do a much better job at decoupling the subwoofer from the floor. Now that I got the specifications, features, and other mumbo jumbo out of the way, we can finally talk about what's in everyone's mind. How does this subwoofer sound? I'm going to break this up into two parts. The first part being sound quality during music, and the second part being sound quality and output during movies. Personally, I prefer sealed subwoofer designs over ported subwoofer designs because I think they tend to sound more natural to me. This is a personal preference of mine and there is no right or wrong answer here. It all boils down to what you prefer. That's why it's so important that when you're shopping for a new subwoofer that you order one from a manufacturer or store who has a great return policy. This way you can order several different subwoofers to try out in your listening area and decide for yourself which one sounds best to you. REL offers a pretty generous 60 day in home trial and if for any reason you don't like it, you can return it. So how does this subwoofer sound during music? If you're an avid music listener, then the HT1205 will not disappoint. I was really impressed with this subwoofer's music performance, especially at the sale price that I paid. I had no problem integrating this subwoofer with my Sonus Faber speakers or my Bowers & Wilkins speakers. During my listening sessions, I found that the bass was strong, authoritative, but not overpowering or unnatural sounding. What I really like most about this subwoofer is its fidelity and detail during drum beats and bass guitars. Instead of your typical monotone bass tones that most cheap subwoofers produce, the HT1205 was lively and natural sounding, almost as if the concert was taking place right in my living room. I played a variety of Super Audio CDs and was very impressed by the definition of each bass note. This is not your typical budget subwoofer that only has one bass note. This subwoofer has superb fidelity that I think most music lovers will really enjoy. And at the $449 sale price, you won't find a better subwoofer for the money. Even at full MSRP of $749, this subwoofer offers pretty decent value for money. So how does the HT1205 compare to an SB3000? For music performance, the HT1205 and SB3000 have very similar performance. Both subwoofers sounded natural and produced powerful deep bass that is rich in detail that I think would impress most audiophiles. 
The SP3000 is $450 more than an HT1205, but it also includes a non-board DSP, which the HT1205 lacks. The addition of a DSP on the SP3000 will allow a user to fine-tune the characteristics of the sound a bit more, so a buyer will have to decide for themselves if a DSP is important to them. Also, the SP3000 does have quite a bit more output if you like your music listening sessions at ear bleeding volumes. But besides that, I would consider their sound quality very similar. If you like how an SP3000 sounds for music, but don't want to pay the 1000 plus price tag, then the HT1205 could be a good value option for you. If you were able to purchase an HT1205 at the sale price, then you stole it. For movie performance, this is where the gap between the HT1205 and the SP3000 widened, and it should, considering the SP3000 has an onboard DSP with bass boost and costs almost $500 more. However, the REL HT1205 provides very respectable movie performance for this price category. This subwoofer had no problem pressurizing my medium sized room with clean, natural sounding bass that I could feel. At my normal listening volumes, the explosions were distortion free, loud and authoritative. I really love the fact that the bass notes during gun battle scenes sounded realistic and lively. Every shot fired can be felt in the chest as well as in the floor. If you have a larger room with vaulted ceilings, then you might need two subwoofers in order to have enough output to pressurize your room with bass. Here's a short clip of War of the Worlds starring Tom Cruise. I know it's hard to get an idea of the bass performance through a computer screen, but when that alien craft landed on that car, it was incredible. Not only was the floor vibrating, but I could feel the stomp from the alien crushing that car in my chest. If you have seen any of my previous review videos on subwoofers, then you know I love to use the intro scene from the movie Doom to test my subwoofers with. This intro scene from the movie Doom is brutal on subwoofers and has a very bass heavy soundtrack. The subwoofer will be the only speaker playing during this test. This ensures that the subwoofer isn't distorting and I believe it provides a more accurate representation of this subwoofer's output. Now it's time to fire up my trusty SPL app and see what this subwoofer can do. During the intro scene from the movie Doom, this subwoofer was able to hit a peak SPL of 101 decibels on my SPL meter. That's very respectable, and plenty loud in my opinion. I have really enjoyed my time with the REL HT1205. In fact, I loved it so much that I decided to keep this subwoofer and give it a permanent home in my theater room. I'll be placing this subwoofer in the back corner of my room next to my theater chairs to give movie watchers a little more bass kick. I'm also pairing the HT1205 with RHEL's HT wireless connection system, which allows me to place the subwoofer anywhere in the room without having a bunch of cables scattered everywhere. This subwoofer blends nicely with my B&W speakers and SVS SB16 and doesn't sound out of place at all. This is the first time I've added a second subwoofer to my theater room and I was surprised by the additional effects and detail that come along with adding a second sub. So what do I think about the RHEL HT1205? I think at the $449 sale price, the HT1205 is an absolute bargain and simply put, you won't find a better subwoofer for the money. However, at the original $749 MSRP, I think it lacks one key feature that some other subwoofers have at this price point, and that's a DSP. Consumers will have to decide for themselves if the lack of a DSP still makes this subwoofer worth it. I think it does. Some of the things I like most about this subwoofer are its build quality, the 60 day in home trial, the liveliness of the bass notes, and its ability to integrate into a variety of systems. The cabinet construction on the HT1205 is very nice. The front baffle on this thing is almost one inch in thickness. 
The subwoofer provided quick authoritative bass and the definition of those bass tones were among the best that I have heard at this price point. I think Rel did a phenomenal job designing a subwoofer that has a very small footprint that also packs some serious punch. This subwoofer has superb transient response and has a very smooth roll off. Some of the things I don't like include the lack of a DSP and only a 3 year warranty. I'm seeing more and more subwoofers at this price point include a DSP and RHEL with all their engineering might should be able to offer this. DSPs offer many benefits that help combat problems with room acoustics and more audiophiles are demanding this feature set. RHEL is also a premium brand and as such they should be standing behind their products for at least 5 years like SVS. Besides those issues, I really love my HT1205 and it pretty much ticks all the boxes I'm looking for in a great subwoofer, like superb sound quality, strong output, good transient response, and solid build quality. If you're looking for a great sounding subwoofer that can do both music and movies, then I think the RHEL HT1205 will impress most audiophiles. And that's my review on the RHEL HT1205. Hopefully this video will give you an idea of how the HT1205 will sound and perform. Let me know what you think about RHEL subwoofers by commenting down below. So long and happy listening.